In this video, we're going to go through the process of creating a tenant. In a previous video, we enabled it, so now we're going to go through the process of creating it. I've already logged into our Virilize Suite Lifecycle Manager, which I'll just abbreviate as LCM. In the upper hand corner, I'm going to click on our Services Square and then click on Identity Tenant Management. I'll then click on Tenant Management. If we see something different from this window, it tells us that tenants haven't been enabled. We need to go through the process of enabling tenants. Since we can see the Add Tenant button, we'll go and click on it. We'll create a tenant called Marvel. For our username, we'll call it Marvel Admin, first name Marvel, last name Admin. And then for the email address, we need to make sure we have a valid email address. That way, if we ever needed to, we could use it for password recovery. And lastly, I'll put in a password. Once that's done, I'll click on the next button. We then have the decision if you want to migrate our Active Directory directories to this new tenant. So for a single company, we're always in the same Active Directory structure. We can check the box our new tenant will have that Active Directory connection. But if we're a service provider, work with multiple different companies that each has their own Active Directory structure, then you might wanna leave this box unchecked. For this tenant, we do wanna migrate our directories. So I'll check the box and then put in the password that can access Active Directory. I'll then click on Validate. Once that's done, I'll click on Save and Next. We next need to tell LCM where we want this tenant synced. We've got an environment called Virilize Suite 8.3. That's where we want it to be synced. Once we check the box, it asks us to check two things. The first is DNS, the second is our certificate. We'll start out by looking at DNS first. For checking DNS, these steps are gonna be slightly different than the steps we used in our creating tenants video. For this one, we wanna use a subzone, another way to organize our environment. If you don't have a subzone, you wanna right click and choose new zone, and then give it a name that matches your environment. Once I'm inside there, I wanna create a C name or make sure there's already a C name populated. For us, we've got one that's called Marvel, and it's pointing to our load balancer IP address, in this case, 105. I then want to check our certificate. So I'm going to click on our services square, click on locker, and then choose our self-signed wildcard certificate. And the thing I'm looking for on this screen is our subject alternative name, our SAN. Since we're creating a Marvel tenant, I want to make sure the certificate encompasses that Marvel tenant. If it doesn't, if we're using explicit names, we just want to make sure they add it to the certificate. To jump back into our process, I'm going to click on the service squares again, and then click on lifecycle operations. We can turn a recent request, our tenant creation for Marvel. Now that we've verified DNS and our certificate, I'll click on save and next. We then want to run a pre-check. This will go through the process of checking to make sure everything is correct, like our DNS and our certificate. If you had some kind of issue, we could look at it on the screen. Alternatively, we could click on the download report to see an offline copy. I'll then click on save and next. We're now at the summary screen, reviewing our settings, make sure everything is correct before we start the process. I'll go and click on create tenant. As we're going through the process of creating the tenant, we can click on the view request details to monitor the progress. In my environment, it took a little over five minutes. Let's go through the process of verifying it. I'm gonna click on the services square, click on identity and tenant management. I'll then click on tenant management. We can now see we have a marble tenant, but we're not quite done yet. We need to go through the process of setting up our permissions. I'll then open up a new tab and log into our Marvel tenant. In this case, marvel.vr83.autolab.local. I'll then click on the login page, but stop before you hit the next button. There's a little bit of a trap that happens here. We need to log in with our tenant admin first to set up our permissions. So let's go and click on the dropdown and change it to system domain. I'll then click on the next button. I'll use our Marvel admin account that we created earlier to log in. I'm gonna click on the identity and access management where we can title our Active Directory groups. We can currently see all of our users have already been synced. We just need to grant them permissions. I'm gonna click on Enterprise Groups. I'll then assign it a role. In this case, I'll give it Organization Owner. I'm then gonna add Service Access. For our environment, I'm gonna keep clicking on the button until I can't anymore. But for your environment, you may need to customize the roles. I'm gonna use Orchestrator as an example. If I click that dropdown, we can see you have Administrator Rights but I could also add Workflow Designer if I wanted to. I'm gonna click on the Assign button. We've successfully granted rights to our accounts. Now we can test logging in with your admin account. At the bottom, make sure you see the appropriate domain. If not, click the link to change to a different domain. If you can successfully log in, you've created your first tenant. In future videos, we'll go through the process of migrating a tenant and merging a tenant. I hope you found this video informative and I'll see you in the next one.